Hey, what's going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I'm happy to have you join me for yet another lesson inside of Swift development. Now today's video, we're going to focus our attention on how to improve our UI inside of our application. And so more specifically, I wanted to show you how to perform animations inside of a UI table view like this over here. So this is our core data course application. And what we have is a list of companies. And the moment I hit the reset button on the top right over there, or top left, it's going to execute a delete animation on all the rows inside of my list. So let me execute that one more time by hitting the reload by dragging down and resetting one more time like so. Now, if you don't perform animations like this inside of a UI table view, what you'll get is sort of a jerky type of reload instead. And you can kind of see that by this reload over here, hit that reload and you see it kind of just jumps in your face instead of this very nice and fluid animation style like that. All right, so to make this easier to understand, I'm going to refer back to our contacts application, which is over here. And we have a bunch of sections and a bunch of names inside of those sections. And let's just see what the show index path button does. And that actually executes a reload from the left side to the right side like that. And it's really nice and makes your application pop just a little bit more. So this is what we're going to do. And then we'll perhaps move on to deleting items from our sections and then reinserting them kind of like that. So let's go ahead and jump into Xcode to see how the implementation is actually done. All right, so back inside of Xcode, I have opened this project of where we left off last time. So let me run this application real quick. And basically we have this two dimensional array over here that has a bunch of names inside. And this is actually what we rendered out inside of each individual section of names, kind of like that. And all the way down below is where we implemented all of the UI table view delegate methods of number of row, number of sections and also cell for row at all the way down here in order to render out the name and the section and row like that. So what I am going to do today is to teach you how to reload a specific section and then we'll move on to reloading the entire table view with some various animations. So to start off all of this, I would like to add a button in the top right corner so that I can actually execute some code very similar to what I have over there with that button. So go inside of, let's see, viewed it load. And let's go inside of here, type navigation item dot right bar button item equals UI bar button item. So this comes with a constructor of title and all this other good stuff as well. This will just say show index path. And then we'll say dot, and it comes up with this option of plain target is self. And then we'll call this selector on self like this over here. So handle perhaps show index path, or whatever you want to call this method. And this you have to declare it somewhere inside of your view controller. So the question is, where exactly do we want to do this? Well, let's make it easy and just put it next to the two dimensional array with function like that and just paste in that method. Now inside of Swift 4, you have to actually mark these functions these target selector functions as objective C like that. Otherwise it won't work. So that's what you have to do. And we'll say, uh, you know, attempting reload animation of index paths like that. Close off that dot, 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 run my code one more time. Uh, it should be able to print out this statement inside of the console below. Every time I hit the top right show index path item, like this over here, it's going to reload. And there we go, show next path. And then we have these couple of statements. So really good start. And now what I would like to show you how to do is to first reload one specific row inside of our table view first, and then we'll move on to the section and then the whole list at the very end. So let's just see how to do this. And inside of here, you could just simply call table view. And there's a lot of methods on here, such as reload and also insert like that and also delete like that. So we're going to use the reload method first because it's the easiest one to use. And so this takes in an array of things that you would like to reload. And then it takes in an animation style. At the very end, you hit dot, you get a bunch of options. And inside of the example that I showed you earlier, we have I think dot left or dot right, one of those. 
And the next question is, how do we get index path of the very first section and row? Well, we just construct it right here. Let index path equals index path. Use this constructor all the way down here. We have row and section. So let's use row and section of zero. And inside of here, you have to punch in an array of things you want to reload. That's just how this method call works. So make sure to use an array right here. That's what these two brackets are kind of indicating. And once you have that, you can hit this and you notice how Amy over there slides to the left. If you want it to slide to the right, you can hit dot right. If you command click into here, you get into all of the options, hopefully. And this does take a while to load in Xcode 9. And those are all your options right there. So let me go back to my file and hitting this, you see Amy slides over to the right. Okay, so really good stuff there, and it's a really good first step into going into the direction of executing this entire animation. So always good to go step by step. And now what I want to do is to reload this entire top section from Amy to Mary. So how I am going to do that is to look at this first section inside of this two-dimensional array from Amy to Mary. And the way I would have to get this first section is to perhaps use this method over here. You can say two dimension and array. And this guy, you can just say zero. And this will be, let's see, this top section over here. One would be this over here, and then so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is to just do this to get a loop going. So for, uh, let's see, index in this thing dot indices. See so indices like that, and just use a brace and print out what this index object is. And we'll just run our application. So this over here is this. So we're going to print out all the indices, which is going to be 0, 1, all the way up to 6 for Mary, I believe. So hit that. We get down below, we get 0 all the way up to 6. So that's kind of how we get all of the rows inside the first section. So this really is the section, the zero guy. So instead of here, we just simply construct all of our index paths. So let's see, how do we want to do this? Uh, let index path equals index path like that. Get the capital I one. And then we'll use the constructor of row and section. Again, the section is just the zero. The row is this index variable that we get from this loop. And we can perhaps just remove that print statement and now that we have this going, we would like to somehow build all of these index paths. So build all the index paths we want to reload. And the way we will do this is pretty common. We'll set a variable called index paths, paths to reload here. And we'll just simply initialize it as an index path type array. So the type is index path and use paren paren you get an empty list like that and inside of here you can append onto that array index path to reload append and we'll just use this index path that we're kind of constructing throughout the entire looping so what this really means is over here we can just use that instead of this array that we manually constructed so let me remove that and run my application one more time so again we're just looping through the first section and then we're appending onto the things that we want to reload with each of these rows and that effect has this over here which just slides all of the rows inside the first section to the right so that's pretty good and the question now is how do we move on to reloading every row inside of my table view so that the effect kind of looks like this over here so we're just reloading everything and that is an interesting obstacle to tackle and the way that you would do that is to execute something called a nested for loop. So we're going to do a nested for loop on this entire two dimensional array. So the way I'm going to do that is to first comment out this so that we can have a fresh start. And instead of just using the section of zero, we're going to use something else. Okay, so to perform this nested for loop, I'm going to say for section and let's use in two dimensional array and let's just use indices on this array instead and i'll print out what section is going to be hopefully some of you are able to understand what i'm trying to do here and basically the indices for a two-dimensional array is going to be zero 
one, two, and three. So down here you'll see exactly that, zero, one, two, and three. And inside of it, we're going to iterate through all of the objects for each one of these sections like this and like that. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to say four, and we'll say row in two dimensional array. And we're going to access the section like that. And we're going to say indices like so. And then finally, I'll just remove this print statement, put it in here, and also print out the row. So let me rerun. Uh, I'll remove these spaces. Don't really like these empty blank spaces in my code. So let's see what that will print out. So for each section, we're going to get all of the rows. So pretty much we have been able to build out all of these section and rows. So you see section zero goes all the way up to row six. So section zero, row zero, section zero, row six. And then for section two, we have one, 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 and zero, one, two, three, which is exactly what that is. So that's kind of how that works. And down below you get two and section three with row zero and row one, uh, exactly like what's being printed out. So as you can see, you can simply say, let's see, let's index path and just construct this again, similar to what we did just before. So down here we have row and section and uh, it's very convenient that we just have these parameters named the correct way. And let's see, index paths to reload dot append. Let's put this index path in there. And I believe that's going to load the correct index path. So I guess I'll leave this inside of the code if you guys want to download it using the link below, obviously. This way you can see what I've been doing so far. And let's hit show index path. And you see everything kind of reloads to the right like that. You scroll down here, everything still works. So that's really good. And the next thing I would like to kind of finish off here with is how you can toggle the animation so that it kind of goes from the right and then goes to the left, very similar to what we have over here. So show next path, you know, kind of slides over to the right, slides over to the left. All right, so to toggle this type of animation, I'm going to go up here and introduce a variable inside of my view controller class. And let's call this, you know, var show index paths. And let's just set it to some kind of default value of false. And then down below, I guess, right above the reload, I'm going to say uh, show index paths. I'm going to set it equal to the reverse of what it is. So if it's false in the beginning, the first time we hit this button, it's going to turn into true. And then I'm going to decide based on this value what the animation type needs to be. So let's just say let animation style equals and a show index path. I'm going to use something called a ternary operator again. And again, it's just a basic shorthand for an if statement. And so this guy, if it's true, we're going to use UI table view row animation style of, I don't know, right. Otherwise we can just say dot left like so. Now the reason why you can use dot left here and you can't use dot right over here is because it's automatically inferred over here that you're using one of these types. And that's why you don't have to type in this whole guy over there. So that's how that works. And animation style, we'll just use that instead of this width over here. You don't have to include that dot or you better not include that dot, otherwise it won't compile. So let's run our application here and we will get the show next path of sliding to the right and then we hit it again, we get to the left. So right, left, right, left. All right, so that's really good. And the last thing I'll leave you off with here is how we can hide this section and row text. And we will do that by going into, I guess, cell for row at, which is all the way down at the bottom, which is our last function. And down here we can simply say, let's see, we're printing out the cell label text over here with the section. So let's just wrap this whole thing in if show index path, if that's a Boolean of true, then we'll just, you know, add on to this cell. So hit a semicolon to get the spacing correct. A little uh, shortcut that I like to use. Remove these spaces and also these comments that we don't really need anymore. It's always good to leave your code as clean as possible in case anyone else looks at it. Uh, it's really hard to understand it if you see all these green lines everywhere. 
So we're going to show a next path, and then we have section and row. Remove that, we have just the name. So really, really good job. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today's lesson on how to execute animations on a UI table view. Now, if you're interested in more Swift development, make sure to check out the link for the Core Data course down below. Now, core data is a really interesting topic, and the reason why you would want to implement it inside of your application is because, let's say you want to save some data that your user inputs inside of your app, right? Well, doing it inside of user defaults is definitely possible, but it's really hard to maintain that structure. So this is why we introduced core data, because it allows us to use a lot of structured models and allows us to also associate these models with relationships as well, making it very easy to design and also architect your application for future maintenance. So if you're interested, I definitely recommend that you check out the course preview using the link down below. Now, if you want to download the source code for today's project, you can also find a link down below as well. And finally, don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel for more Swift tutorials. That's going to be it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.